Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version, commonly referred to. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along in what we are going to be looking at today, word for word, verse by verse. It is very important that you do this, okay? It is very important. It, uh, it is of the utmost importance that you follow along in the scriptures with me today, okay? Because what we are discussing, like I said in the previous video, is so serious that don't sit there idle. Get the scriptures, the authorized version. Get the scriptures. Follow me along in what we are going to be looking at today, okay? Because this is part two to the video that was done yesterday, rightly dividing, okay? Rightly dividing. The scriptures tell us that we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, that we are to be workmen who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? And we, we get into it very deeply yesterday in the first video, Rightly Dividing. And in the previous video, we go through the, four, for, eh, <laughs> the first four dispensations, which is the first dispensation, the Garden of Eden, which was by works. Okay, The second dispensation, the dispensation of the patriarchs, they, had, they were to have faith, in God, in what he will do, and what he will bring about. Their faith was in God that he will do as he said he will do. What I will do. I will. I will. I will. Okay? So, the dispensation of the patriarchs, the second dispensation, is similar onto the dispensation that we are in today. But, the difference is, in the dispensation of the patriarchs, their faith was in what God will do. Okay? And we get into that in a lot of depth in the previous video, just touching on it right now. Okay? Then the third dispensation is the dispensation of the law, which is faith and works. You were to have faith that God would honor you for doing the works of the law to be made right with him. That God would honor you for doing what he said for you to do according to the law to be right with him. And uh, in the dispensation of the law, animal sacrifices were introduced because the blood of bulls and goats to cover sin. Okay? To cover, not to cleanse away. Okay? There's a big difference. Okay? And as we discussed previously in the previous video, um, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses away, all right? While the blood of bulls and goats um, just covered it, okay? The animal sacrifices were not objects of faith, okay? Like I said, watch the previous video. Link for it will be in the description box. Then the fourth dispensation which is this dispensation today, the time of the Gentiles. And we are made right with God by his grace through our faith. Okay? His grace through our faith. All right? And we get into that quite deeply in the video of yesterday. And the difference between the dispensation today and the time of the patriarchs uh, during the dispensation of the law is it is finished. Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood upon the cross to cleanse away sin. Okay? All right? Today, our faith is upon Jesus Christ for what he has done. He has died. He has, he was buried. He has risen from the dead. His blood is shed. Okay? It is finished. All right? All right? That is this dispensation. And this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, us Gentiles were grafted into the tree of the Jew to make them jealous, okay? Like I said, we get into deep detail uh, in the four dispensations in the previous video. But today, we are going to finish this up by examining the three final dispensations in Scripture, okay? So... Without further ado, the fifth dispensation. Now, five is associated with the number of death. Remember, 
Remember the I wills of Satan in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 15, where he says, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Lucifer saying, I will be like the Most High. He has five I wills. Five is associated with the number of death, okay? And the time coming, after this dispensation, and you, you watched the previous video, this dispensation will end with the redemption of the purchased possession. The church of the living God, truly saved, born again, um, believers on Jesus Christ, who are sealed unto the day of redemption, have the Lord within us, okay? We are the church of the living God, okay? We are the purchased possession. The redemption of the purchased possession is the catching way of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. And after we are redeemed and caught up, and the majority of you are left behind, hence will begin the time of Jeremiah chapter 30. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 9. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 1 on to verse 9. Follow me along. Okay? The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, as they shall possess it. And they shall possess it. Excuse me. And yes, 1948, Israel was reestablished as a nation. And yes, the Hebrews, the Jews are in Israel today. Okay? Not in the scriptural allotted size of Israel according to scripture. But yes, Israel, the Jew, the Hebrew, is in their homeland today uh, since 1948 and whatnot. Okay? Verse 4. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Now, let's look at this verse, because there are those out there who like to make the argument, Alas, for that day is great. They say that the, that the time of Jacob's trouble is one day. Comma, so that none is like it. Colon, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Jacob, Jacob, the third of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay, that is the Hebraic line that the Lord chose out of the kindred of Shem. Okay? That is why it is impossible for a Japhethite, such as myself, or a Hamite, as some of you are, that is why it is impossible for you to be a Hebrew. There are those of Shem, such as um, the Orientals, the Japanese Chinese, the Koreans, okay? They are of Shem, but they are not Hebrews, okay? All right? It is impossible for a Japhethite or a Hamite to be a Hebrew. Why? Because number one, the line of the Hebrew was chosen out of Shem, stemming from Abraham onto Isaac and onto Jacob, who would become Israel. But see, it is noted, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, 
but he shall be saved out of it. Jacob would become Israel. So Jacob's trouble, Israel's trouble. Okay, but you got to remember something here, and I, I want you to roll this around in your head. Israel today does not accept or acknowledge their God, their King, their true Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. They do not. Okay, there are Jews, Hebrews out there who are truly saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus of the Church of the Living God. Yes, yes, but Jewry. In a, in a whole, has rejected their king. Okay? Hence, Jesus, when he was first here, was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. They rejected that. Then after the death, burial, and resurrection, then he was he offered the gospel, primarily, specifically unto them at the first. They rejected that, came on to us Gentiles, and we were grafted in. It is still to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. Greeks are Gentiles, okay? Someone who is not a Jew is a Gentile, okay? Okay, so, but Jacob, Jacob means one who takes his brother by the heel or supplanter. It's not modern Israel today behaving as Jacob before Jacob wrestled with God. Oh, there are so many, th so many things that could be tied into this coming hellacious period of seven years that is going to come after we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, okay? Jacob's wrestlings with God, okay? With after the wrestlings with God, when he halted upon his thigh, okay? God called him Israel, Israel, a prince with man and with God, okay? But Jacob's trouble, Jacob, supplanter, the one who, which is more accurate, the one who took his brother by the heel, is that not what Israel today is doing? Supplanting the Lord Jesus Christ for their Talmud, for their Kabbalistic magic, for the traditions of the rabbis. So Jacob's trouble, Jacob, who is Jacob? The third of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the patriarchs of the Hebraic Hebrew line. So verse 7 here tells us what? That the time of Jacob's trouble is for who? The Hebrews, the Jews, Israel, okay? Not the church, as Roman Catholicism wants all of you to believe, okay? Verse 8, For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves, out of, serve themselves of him. But... They shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom I will raise up unto them. So here in Jeremiah 30, verses 1 under verse 9, mention of the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? But he shall be saved out of it. So it's not a very long time period. And during that time period, the church of the living God is not going to be on the earth. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. We talked about this yesterday, okay? God is omnipresent. God is omniscient. He is not going anywhere, okay? But his true ambassador, the church of the living God, okay? And the Jew who was originally intended to be his ambassador will be on the earth. But at that time, at the very beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble, they're not going to be... Um, worshiping or looking to their Lord Jesus Christ? No. No. So the time coming after the redemption of the purchased possession is called scripturally the time of Jacob's trouble. Here's my challenge to any of you Christians out there who refer to the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year time period, after the redemption of the purchased possession. You call it the what? 
the Great Tribulation. Here's my challenge to you. I'll give you a hundred bucks if you, within the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James version, the King James scriptures, I'll give you a hundred bucks. If you can find in the authorized version of the scriptures, God's word, find me the great tribulation. Find it for me. The great tribulation. Find it for me. That's not fair. It's not fair. Why is it not fair? Because it's not in there. The great tribulation. Okay? There will be great tribulation, a descriptive, not a title, not a title. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. The accurate, appropriate title for the time period that is coming after the redemption of the purchased possession. The time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? This is important. Because the church of the living God, the purchased possession will be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. But there are going to be a lot of Christians left behind, we're going to be going through the Great Tribulation. Do you see? So the time period is coming that is coming is called the time of Jacob's trouble. See, today, in this dispensation, God is dealing with both Jew and Gentile. Okay? We, we, we covered this in depth yesterday, so we're not going to get into it too deeply today. But there's neither Jew nor Greek male or female, salvifically, we are all one in Christ Jesus. If you come to him according to his terms and not be an evil, wicked, scoundrel devil and boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way, okay? If you come to the Lord on his terms, his conditions, and he save you, you are part of his bones and, his, and of his flesh, okay? To the Jew first and also to the Gentile, all right? So this time period, Jew and Gentile, are within the body of Christ, the church of the living God, okay? But see, after the redemption of the purchased possession, the time of Jacob's trouble, God is, will no longer be dealing with Jew and Gentile, but he will be focusing attention, his attention primarily, specifically onto the Jews. Go to the book of Daniel, chapter 9. Daniel, chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. We want verses 24 on to verse 27. Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 27. Now these are, this is the basic, these are the basics of these dispensations, okay? Like I said in the previous video, um, we could, with every single dispensation, with the exception of the very first one, uh, we could take about eight hours for every dispensation, with, with the exception of the first one, to iron out the specifics or see what goes with what, and still eight hours would not be sufficient. These are the basic tenets of these dispensations so you can get them, okay? So, Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 27. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Now look at that verse. Seventy weeks, which is uh, um, is actually seven years, okay? But this time period that is coming is seven years. Seventieth, seventieth uh, week. Daniel's seventieth week is uh, something else that people have liked to call it. It doesn't say Daniel's seventieth week in Scripture, the time of Jacob's trouble. 
Okay? But 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. Daniel was the one who, who unto whom this was revealed. Daniel was a Hebrew, a Jew. So thy people, the Jews, and upon thy holy city, Jerusalem, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins that are within that dispensation. Okay? All right? And to make reconciliation for iniquity. Because, see, Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on the cross. Okay? It is finished. Okay? That cannot be undone. So when it says to make an end of sins, an end of the sins that are within that dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Let's continue. Okay? And to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, to bring in everlasting righteousness. What is that a reference to? The kingdom of heaven. When our Lord Jesus Christ comes back at his second coming with us, the church of the living God, has, okay, with him, okay? And to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy, as we already looked at in Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 1 on verse 9, David, their king, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Now therefore, know therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Okay? Now, when it's talking about here in weeks, okay, weeks, like I said, it is a seven-year time period. But the three score and two weeks, okay, is denoting what? Three and a half years, okay? The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. What does this tell us? That I believe this is telling us that the third temple the inevitable third temple that will be rebuilt on the on the dome where the dome of the rock now sits, um, it's going to be rebuilt during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, because if it were to be starting and building right now, every one of the church and living God with the body of Christ still on the earth would be like, "Whoa, they're building the third temple!" No, no, and the wall even in troublous times, troublous times. The time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? I believe this tells us that the third temple will be rebuilt during the time of Jacob's trouble within the first three and a half years of the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Let's continue. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And on to the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Sacrifice and oblation to cease. See, after we, the church of the living God, be redeemed. Okay? That's the end of this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. After we are redeemed, the time of Jacob's trouble commences. Okay? That man of sin, the son of perdition, erroneously referred to as the Antichrist, the Antichrist, dear friend, find it for me, okay? You won't, but, okay? That man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? Number one, he's going to be a Jew. He's going to be a Jew. And I believe that they are going to be going after a common enemy, the sons of Ishmael, the Muslims. Because when they destroy the Dome of the Rock to make room for the rebuilt temple, all the sons of Ishmael, the Muslims, are just going to go bonkers. Okay? So they're going to need a common enemy. The church of the living God is not going to be on the earth. Oh, they're going to be Christians, sure. But see, those are the ones who are left behind. The fake, the fraudulent, the coadjutors, the boot-the-door people if he even survives. Okay, those are the types of people that are going to be left behind. Okay, the Christians during the Great Tribulation. Okay, they're not going to be a threat. 
Okay? They are not going to be the ones that that man of sin is going to focus on because the ones who are left behind were deceived all the way through anyway. Okay? Their hope is, as we have talked about before, that they are part of that great multitude that get wiped out right away when they realize, oh boy, we've missed it. Okay? That's their only hope. But see, the man of sin, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is not going to be focusing on them, I believe. I believe he's going to be focusing on the Muslims. And of course, the sons of Ishmael and the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they don't get along. Okay? So, that man of sin, who's going to be associated with the Vatican, probably a pope, would not doubt it. He's going to be a Jew. He's going to be a celibate pope. And in order to make nice with the Hebrews, they're going to be going after the Muslims. So, in order to pass off that suspension of disbelief, he's going to be helping them. And, ha and being back by the deep pockets of the Vatican, they'll get that temple up in no time. But, the third rebuilt temple, animal sacrifices, is going to return. The law is going to, going to be coming back. That's why it says here in verse 27, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. So in the third rebuilt temple, during the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to be offering sacrifices and oblations according as it, that is written in the scripture. Okay? They, they will be. All right? And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the cons cons consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay? So this is giving us kind of a glimpse of what is going to happen, okay? It's the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? God is turning his attention toward the Jew, okay? Towards the Jew. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, who will be released after we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, okay? He's going to go forth conquering and to conquer, all right? And that is actually in Revelation chapter 6, okay? Go to Revelation chapter 6. Okay, Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. First of all, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of, were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. That's the catching away, the redemption of the purchase possession. After the redemption of the purchased possession, Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, and 2, excuse me. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, the Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, a bow, but no arrows, Hmm. And a crown was given unto him, being allowed of God to wreak havoc on earth for judgment. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Conquering and to conquer. This is that man of sin, the son of perdition. Erroneously referred to as the Antichrist, okay? That's that man of sin, the son of perdition. The Lord is the one who releases him onto the earth for judgment because the time of Jacob's trouble is God's wrath that is going to be poured upon this earth for seven years, okay? And that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be the one who is going to be causing all these problems, being allowed to, because he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The church of the living God is not on the earth. Okay? It's a time of, it's the time of Jacob's trouble, see? And during that time, that seven year time period, oh boy. Oh boy. Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. 
Matthew chapter 24. Matthew, now, okay. Matthew chapter 23, 24, 25, okay? Matthew chapter 24 is still doctrinally in the Old Testament. Why? Because our Lord Jesus Christ had yet to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood upon the cross. So, the law was still binding. So, doctrinally, this is still the Old Testament, okay? Matthew chapter 23 is our Lord talking about the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. This is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? So we're going to, we're going to do a little, a little reading here. Matthew chapter 24. We will be reading verses 1 all the way on to verse 28, okay? And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And of course, uh, that happened. The, the Romans, I believe it was AD 90, came in and just destroyed the temple. Okay, so that was fulfilled. All right. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples, who were Jews, came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign, because the Jews require a sign, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20 through 24 talks about that, and what shall be the sign, the Jews require a sign, of thy coming and of the end of the world, of thy coming. Now, question. Was he not already there present? Come on. Yes, he was. Yes. So, the sign of thy coming, he was already there. What are they referring to? The second coming. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Coming into his kingdom. Okay? He was obviously right there. So, let's continue. And Jesus answered and said unto them, the Jews... Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, Christ means anointed one. Okay? Today, for our instruction in righteousness, we can look at this. Instruction in righteousness meaning how we are to live godly today. According to the scripture, we have all things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. Okay, he, uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 4, okay. For our instruction in righteousness today in this dispensation, we can look at this and say, oh, there are many out there who are saying, I am Christ. We're just like, wait a minute, saying, I'm Christ? Christ means anointed one. Okay? So, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Many coming around saying, well, hi, I'm Jesus Christ. Or hi, I'm the promised son of David. Uh, or whatever. Uh, most people even will, would look at you like you're crazy. What are you talking about? Christ means anointed one. And all these prophetic word devils and prophetic visionaries, okay? Don't they say that they are anointed ones? I'm anointed. The Holy Ghost has come upon me. Okay? They are other Christs. Okay? They're calling themselves anointed. Okay? But, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And remember too, this is a, talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. And the body of Christ, the church of the living God, is not on the earth to be like, hey, hey, hey! Okay? So let's continue. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And look at what the Jesuits are doing with Putin and those poor people in, um, uh, what is that, Ukraine, okay? We are hearing of wars and rumors of wars, are we not? 
Mm-hmm. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Just the beginnings. Okay? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Here it gives it away, okay? But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, which is all works, okay? This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Mm -hmm. Okay? Verse 13 tells us unto whom and what dispensation this is a reference unto. Today, in this dispensation, Okay, e even you wicked, easy believism, devil heretics will agree with this. Okay, even you devils will agree to this. Today in this dispensation, you and I don't have to endure to the end to for anything to be saved. We don't. Because if you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, you call upon his name, and he save you, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved, okay? All right? So you don't have to endure to the end of anything to be saved because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We don't have to endure to the end for anything today, dear friend, okay? We don't. If we die, we're going to go home to be with the Lord, all right? Our, we are sealed. If you are truly saved, you are sealed until the day of redemption. The Lord lives within you as a permanent residence within you. We covered that yesterday. Okay? All right? So you are going to go to heaven no matter what. We don't have to endure to the end for anything today. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to have to endure to the end to be saved. See? So verse 13 is telling you for what dispensation this is. Okay? Um, it was not unto the uh, dispensation of the law for which in which dispensation this was spoken, but this is spoken of the dispensation after this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, okay? Verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom, what kingdom? The kingdom of heaven that our Lord was offering unto the Jews that they rejected, okay? The gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of works, okay? The kingdom of, uh, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, the gospel of the son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ as king, okay? The kingdom of heaven, not the gospel that we preach today, okay? Okay? You have to understand that. See, this is why you have to rightly divide the word of truth, the gospel of the kingdom is not the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection that we preach today. No, it is not. The, by grace through faith, it is not what we preach today. Okay? All right? The gospel of the kingdom is a totally different gospel. The kingdom of heaven. Okay? The gospel today is what? Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? By grace through faith. All right? That's the gospel for today. That Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for our sins. Okay? This is the gospel that we preach today. But in the dispensation coming, okay, it's faith and works. Okay? Not the gospel of today, which is by grace through faith. You 
have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. This is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's continue. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, as spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Hold your place here. Uh, and here, right here, the abomination of desolation, that is another title for that man of sin, the son of perdition. Hold your place and go to Daniel chapter 9. No, not Daniel chapter 9, excuse me. Uh, Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel, hold on, brethren. All right, Daniel chapter 12, verses 9, on to verse 13. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and we already looked at that, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Okay? The abomination that maketh desolate set up. It's not an image. It's not a statue. It's a man. Okay? It's a man. The abomination that maketh desolate that man of sin, the son of perdition. This is referring to a man, not in, not a little marionette statue or something like that, okay? Let's continue. Blessed is he that waiteth, endureth to the end, and cometh to the thousand three hundred, three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in the lot at the end of the days. So the abomination that maketh desolate, Back to Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Midway, during the time of Jacob's trouble, that man of sin, the son of perdition, who is going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus, okay, is going to go in to the third rebuilt temple, and he's going to say, I am God. And like I said, he's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. You watch. All you who left behind, you'll see. Okay? But he's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus, and he's going to go in declaring himself to be God. It's like, here I am. You're supposed to you take away these things because here I am. I'm right here. I'm your God. Verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Judea. Jerusalem. Jews. Why would people, why would Christians have to flee from into Judea if they're over like in California or something like that? Because this is for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. And see, verse 15 is talking about when that man of sin, the son of perdition, comes in and says, like, here I am, I'm God. The Jews at that time, some of them, are going to be, it's going to click. And they're going to be like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Houston, we got a problem. Let's, let's get this authorized version of the scriptures and see what, oh boy, they're going to get it. When this happens, some of these Jews, some of these Hebrews, not all of them, some of them, the, the, those who haven't taken the mark of the beast uh, primarily, but there are going to be those Jews who are going to see that sight and they're going to get it and they're going to be like, uh oh, oh, what those authorized version of the scripture believers uh, were telling us all along, they were telling us the truth. They're going to get it. And then they're going to be like, okay, we need to get out of here. Okay? Verse 17. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe 
and woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, because the Sabbath day is going to return, because they are going to bring back the law, because they're going to have the temple and everything. We already talked about that, okay? For then shall be great tribulation. I don't see a the in front of that, do you? <laughs> For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever shall be. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, going forth conquering and to conquer, and when he comes in there into the temple saying, I am God, and the Jews, the, the ones that are going to get it, are like, oh boy, and they skedaddle. That man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to go ape. And he's going to turn and start persecuting the Jewish people, the Hebrews, in a persecution that's going to make the Holocaust look like nothing. The Holocaust. Where Roman Catholicism exterminated well over six million Jews. When Roman Catholicism, Rome, exterminated well over six million Jews. Verse 21 says, wow. Wow. What's coming, this time in Jacob's trouble, is going to make even the Holocaust look like nothing. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, and elect here in this context, who is he talking to? He's talking to Jews. What is he talking about? The time of Jacob's trouble. So the elect, the Jew, in this context, is the Hebrew. Okay? But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Or else that man of sin, the son of perdition, would probably exterminate all the Hebrews. Which he tried to do in World War II through Hitler and whatnot. And, of course, through Roman Catholicism. And remember, Hitler was a Catholic. Okay? But unless the days were be shortened, except those days be shortened. This time period, people, that is coming, you don't want to be left behind to see it. Then, if any man say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, because the Jews require a sign. Insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Again, elect in this context is referring on to the apple of God's eye, the Hebrew, the Jew. Okay? Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber. Believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, lightning, shining, okay? So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Reference unto his son, uh, second coming where every eye is going to see him, okay? You're not going to miss it at his second coming, Okay? So what he's saying is, people are, oh, oh, Christ is over there. He's over there. No, everyone's going to see Christ at his second coming because it's going to be with lightning and big bright lights, okay? Yes, when he come back at, the, at his second coming with us, um, it, 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 blah, 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 it's a, wow, yeah, yeah. There's going to be no mistaking it, okay? Everybody on earth will see. Okay? For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered also, gathered together. Okay? So, 
see, Matthew chapter 24 is in reference specifically talking to you about the time of Jacob's trouble, this time that is coming, okay? It's this time, it's the time that is coming after this dispensation. And see, there are those out there today, like these prophetic devils, and also the easy believism devils, just believe, just believe, okay? Who say they're dispensational, they're not dispensational, okay? Because, like we discussed yesterday, what makes a dispensation? How one is made right with God in that dispensation. That is what determines the dispensation. And when we get caught up, this dispensation ends. And then these people, these devils that are left behind, are going to be going, oh, just believe, just believe. No. No. No, no. See, that's why the Christians that are left behind are not going to be a threat unto that man of sin, the son of perdition. <laughs> because what they are going to be preaching of those Christians who are left behind, who don't realize and wake up, it's like, oh, wow, oh, we've been in heresy. Oh, wow, we should not have been serving the Vatican and working for them. We, oh, wow, wow, this is really happening. We need to, hey, everybody, okay, we were wrong. It, it, you got to repent. And then, of course, that man of sin going to kill those people. Okay? All right? That's your only hope if you're one of these Christians that get left behind. And you've heard all this. And you've scoffed at it. It's your only hope. You think you're, you know, I know a lot of you devils think you're a bunch of tough guys, don't you? <laughs> Think you're so tough to be able to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, huh? <laughs> don't pat you, uh, don't break your arm patting yourself on the back there, tough guy. Yeah, yeah. Now go to Daniel chapter eleven, okay? Daniel chapter eleven. Daniel chapter eleven. Come on, fingers. Daniel chapter 11. We are going to be reading verses 21 on to verse 26. Okay? Now, this is talking about that man of sin, the son of perdition, who's going to go forth conquering and to conquer. Okay? Everybody today keeps talking about we need someone to come in, uh, the one world ruler, okay? Prince Charles made the... That wasn't an oopsie, like several of you have corrected me on. He made re reference to a he, that man of sin, the son of perdition. But Daniel chapter 11, verses 21 under verse 26. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall will not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Promising peace, peace. Okay. And with the arms of a flood... Shall they be overthrown, overflown from before him, and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with the a small people. Oh, like the Jesuit order. He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the providence, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. See, as Prince Charles made mention uh, in the video, which I will link about the United Nations, the satanic Jesuit United Nations, that this man of sin, the son of perdition that is coming, okay, that rider on the white horse, he's going to have, he's going to, number one, he's going to be rich. He's going to have at his disposal the deep pockets of the Vatican, okay? And those who join up with him, he's going to distribute, okay? Okay? He's going to come in peaceably and obtain everything by flatteries, okay? He's going to be aided and backed by the Vatican, the richest of all nations on earth, okay? So this guy is going to come and have the wealth of the Vatican at his disposal. Don't forget that, okay? Do not forget that. 
He shall enter, verse 24, he shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the providence, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, his fathers, okay, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices, devices against the strongholds even for a time. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. Now, looking at verse 23, and after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with the small people. We want Daniel chapter 8 now, verses 23 on to verse 25. Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 on to verse 25. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance, and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. No, no. Remember, the white horse in Revelation chapter 6, uh, 1 and 2, he goes forth conquering to conquer. He has a bow, but he has no arrows. He has a bow, but no arrows. Hmm. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Okay? And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. The holy people, the Jews. And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. Uh, and through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, excuse me, and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Okay? So, this man of sin, the son of perdition, He's going to come in peaceably. He's going to have the deep pockets of the Vatican. Okay? He's going to be a Jew. He's going to be a Hebrew. Okay? Because the Hebrews are not going to get in league with someone who isn't sympathetic, at least to them, or who is not at least of them. Okay? So this man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to be a Hebrew. Okay? He's going to be a Hebrew. He's going to be a Jew. For those of you left behind, you watch. You'll see. Okay? He's going to be a Jew. All right? And he's going to be backed by the Vatican, have their unlimited wealth, and he's going to make things prosper. He's going to say, hey, you know, he's going to go forth conquering and conquer. Okay? He's going to go after the Muslims and destroy everyone who gets in his way. But yet, those who are on his side, he's going to make them prosper. Through peace, he's going to destroy many. We got to do this for the sake of peace. We got to go destroy all the poor sons of uh, uh, Ishmael. We have to destroy all these people who get left behind because, in the sake of peace, we got to go and kill everybody. Do you see? You want to be left behind? You think you're man enough to stand uh, to survive that time period, huh? <laughs> Good luck, buddy. Now, back in Daniel chapter 11, verses 36 on to verse 39. And the king shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. And shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods. Note the little g there. And then against the capital G, god of gods. And shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done giving reference about uh, midway during the time of Jacob's trouble, that man of sin, the son of perdition, who's going to be a Jew, who's going to look 
like the Roman Catholic Jesus, he's going to go in there and say, hey, here I am. Okay? Verse 37. Neither shall he regard the capital G, God of his fathers. What does this tell us? He's going to be a Jew. You, you devils who get left behind, you heretics, you poor people who are deceived by these heretics who get left behind, you remember this. That man of sin, the son of perdition, who's going to come up peaceably, backed by the Vatican, promising all these things, he's going to be a Jew, and he's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. You'll see. You'll see. Okay? But he shall not regard the God, capital G, of his fathers. Okay? He's going to be a Jew. Nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, Lord G, for he shall magnify himself above all. Now, there has been debate about the desire of women. I personally believe that the argument is he's either a sodomite or just he has no desire for women or he's going to be a celibate priest. I personally believe that he is going to be a celibate priest, okay? I believe it is the Roman Catholic celibacy that this is making reference to. Could he be a sodomite? You'll find out who get left behind, okay? Is it because he just simply doesn't want a woman? You'll find out, those of you who are left behind. I think and believe more rather He's going to be a Jew, but he's going to be a celibate Jew. Because of Catholicism, he's going to be a Catholic. Okay? That is what I personally believe. Okay? Like I said, you, you'll find out, those of you who get left behind. Okay? Verse 38. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Okay? All right? So, this man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to come in peaceably. All right? He's, I'm telling you, he's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. He's going to be a Jew. He's going to be celebrate, I believe. He's going to, for those who fall in line with him, he's going to give his gifts and everything. Because remember, he's going to have the deep pockets of the Vatican. But he's going to go forth in the name of peace. Hey, we have to go kill all the sons of Ishmael. We have to go kill all these people. It's for peace. So we have to go and destroy everything. Okay? This is the time period that is coming. This is what you do not want to be left behind to see. Okay? Now, go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Now, we did a expository video on Revelation chapter 12. A detailed um, uh, expository video on Revelation chapter 12, which will be in the description box of this. And um, so you can watch that. We're going to read this whole chapter. We're not going to get into, de into it too in depth. That has already been done, but we need to go to over this again, okay? To tell you, this is why we are doing this, to prove to you that the time coming is not the time of the church's trouble, like Roman Catholicism tells you. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the trouble of the Jews, the Hebrews, okay? All right? Today, it is unto the Jew and to the Gentile. If you are saved of the church of the living God, you are all one in Christ Jesus. You, there's no Jew. There's no Gentile. Okay? There's no barbarian, Scythian, male or female. You're all one in Christ Jesus. Salvithically. Culturally, that's a different thing. Okay? But, salvithically, you're all one. Okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works, dear friend. Okay? The law is going to come back. Why? Because it's going to be, the, it's going to be, the focus is on the Jew, the Hebrew, okay? And it's going to be a time of hell on earth, basically, okay? And that's speaking lightly because of what hell actually is, okay? But Revelation chapter 12, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, 
a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon was under her feet. Who is this woman? The woman is Israel. We'll keep reading. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Her, Israel, twelve stars, the twelve tribes of Israel. Okay? Like I said, the, the, the expository video for this chapter will be in the description box, but we have to read this right now. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and paid to be, be delivered. Is it not evident that our Lord sprang from Judah? Okay, Jesus was a Jew of the line of the Hebrew, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, listen, dear friend, Jesus was not black. Jesus was not white. Jesus was not a Hamite. Jesus was not a Japhethite. Jesus, God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh was of Shem, descended from the line of the Hebrew, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? That's why God said in the Old Testament, don't mingle with other kindreds. Because the line, the chosen line, the Hebraic line, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that is from whence our Lord Jesus Christ came. Okay? So, let's continue. Okay? And there appeared, verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Kind of similar to what Herod did. Okay. And she brought forth a man child. She, Israel, brought forth a man-child. Unto us a son is given. Okay? All right? God manifest in the flesh was a Hebrew, is a Jew. Okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That flesh was descended of the Hebraic line, the Jews, from Shem. Okay? And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Hinge this, verse uh, 5, rod of iron. Remember that, okay? And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. The throne. King of David, or uh, son of David, king of the Jews, okay? And the woman fled into the wilderness. The woman is Israel, okay? And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that she should feed that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Satan is not going to win. He will win little battles, yes, he ain't winning the war, okay? And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent, old serpent, like the serpent that was in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3, yes, okay, called the devil and Satan, one being. See, you get these nitwits out there saying Lucifer and Satan are two different things, two different entities. No. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, one and the same, okay, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Christ, anointed one, okay? For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And you look in the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2, Satan is exactly that. Satan, the accuser of the brethren. 
like these guys, these devils who make a million videos about one person, okay, they are the accusers of the brethren, okay, they're of Satan, they work for Satan, okay, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Short time, yeah. Yeah, like seven years. Okay? Or even less than. Excuse me. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And the woman that this is referring to in this chapter is Israel. So Satan is going to go turn after he goes into the third rebuilt temple saying, here I am. He's going to turn because the, uh, um, the Jews that reject him and he's going to become hostile and then he's going to go after the woman, Israel, and try to exterminate the Jews like he tried to do in World War II. Okay? And to the woman were great, given two wings of a great eagle. Eagle, which was an unclean bird, remember that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. And you look in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, where the uh, waters are likened unto people. Okay? And the serpent cast out of his mouth waters as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, Israel, and went to make war with the remnants of her seed, okay, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus. What does this tell us? Okay? The remnant of her seed, that small remnant, the very elect that you read about in Matthew chapter 24, okay? That very, the very elect, that remnant, Satan is going to go after Israel, the, the remnant, that small elect, okay? that is going to survive, okay? He's going to go after them. And this, this is very imperative too, because it says, which keep the commandments of God, because remember, the law is going to be brought back because they're, you know, Satan is going to, it's like, hey, you guys wanted to build your temple and reestablish the law and the sacrifices? Go ahead. So the law is going to return during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because remember it says, which we read in Matthew chapter 24, that your, that your leaving won't be on the Sabbath day. We don't have to, neither does the Jew, have to keep the Sabbath today to be saved or stay saved or be right with God. If you want to keep the Sabbath, knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. That's what Paul's talking about, a holy day set apart, a day where you worship the Lord. If you want to worship on the Sabbath, go ahead. It's not pertaining to your salvation. It's not necessary for your salvation. It's not salvific today in this dispensation. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, the law is going to come back and the Sabbath is going to be kept, remember. So, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Hmm. What does that mean? Faith and works. Now, Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 8. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon is Satan, the beast, that man of sin, the son of perdition. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. 
And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, three and a half years. Okay? And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell on the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the, in the book, in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. And in the description box, there will be the video where we talk about the three books. We talk about this, okay? All right? So, the, wow. Hmm? The whole world is going to worship the beast. Hmm? Where do people worship? In church buildings. Yeah. Yeah. But see now, what is coming? Now see, after this man of sin, the son of perdition, goes forth conquering and to conquer, he's going to have the pockets of the Vatican to give, uh, to build all this stuff and to give on to the nations. But in him going forth conquering and to conquer, he's going to destroy a whole bunch of stuff and the economies are going to be collapsed because of it. So what is that man of sin, the son of perdition, what does Satan have in store for that? And see right here, Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 on to verse 18. This is what these easy believism, sick, satanic devils are all about. Right here, Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 on to verse 18. Okay? And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, doesn't matter who you are, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Okay? And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And if you take the mark, whether in your right hand or in your forehead, it's not that you got to do one, two, three. You can do two of them. No, 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 no. You take that mark that's encompassing all of that. Okay? Don't believe Mr. Breaker. Don't believe Mr. Kim. Don't believe John Mac. Oh, definitely don't believe John MacArthur. These guys who say, oh, yeah, I believe you can take the mark of the beast and still uh, be saved. Yeah. Don't believe Kent Helvin, a Jesuit. Okay? You know, Robert Breaker, cut off your hand or gouge it out of your forehead, just like Gene Kim does, okay? Don't believe them, guys, okay? It's not possible. You take the mark, you're doing all three, okay? There's no way of getting around it. And see, these easy believers some people just believe. It's, just, it's faith alone in every dispensation, okay? In the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works, Okay? Uh, 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 which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ? Okay? It's faith and works. These easy believers and devils, is like, just believe. You, you believe, you're saved. And since they're not dispensational, even though they claim to be dispensational, you're sealed during this time period. And the only ones that are sealed during the time of uh, Jacob's trouble are the 144,000 Jews. Otherwise, eternal security is not there. The 144,000 Jews, okay, not Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses, okay, 144,000 Jews. They are the only ones who are going to be sealed in this time period, okay? Other than that, there is no eternal security in this time period. Okay, why is that? Why is that? Okay, well, verse 18 here in Revelation 13, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. 
World Wide Web, WWW. Okay? There's also things about, well, it's a seat in Parliament or something like that. Yeah, but you look it up in, H, in ancient Hebrew, I believe it is, um, that WWW is 666. 666 equates in ancient Hebrew, I believe it is. Correct me if I'm wrong. As WWW. What is WWW? World Wide Web. Okay. So. Midway after he comes in. Uh, to the temple says. Here I am. That is when I believe. The mark of the beast is going to be implemented. It's not going to be implemented right away. Once we get redeemed. No. I believe it's going to happen. Midway after or around the time. When he goes into the temple. And see. The Jesuits, with their psychological operation known as the Poison Crown, with their <laughs> and their steel of the Jesuit poniard and all their weird nonsense, it's preparatory to make you people prepared who are going to be left behind to take this mark of the beast. Hmm? Wouldn't let you into a store unless. <laughs> Uh, they were doing the thing unless you had the steel of the Jesuit poniard. You can't work. You can't go out in uh, public in certain places in, uh, on earth, right? See, preparatory. To make, to prepare the way, to make the people ready to receive the man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? And see, these easy believers and devils, they're the worst. Because those who make it into this time period, they're going to be saying, yeah, just believe, just believe. Yeah, you got to you gotta feed your family. But what about, don't worry about that. You, it, you know, it's faith alone in every dispensation. Don't worry about it. You got to feed your family. You, you believe you're saved. So don't worry. Take the mark of the beast and damn many people to hell. But see, there's a problem. What happens if you take that mark of the beast? Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 on verse 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. You are worshiping the beast if you receive his mark in your forehead or in your hand. Okay? And over here it says... That and that no man in uh, Revelation 13 verse 17 and that no man might buy or sell save that he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. That is telling you it's like okay the mark of the beast or the number of his name or whatever whatever you want to call it. You take the mark of the beast. It's not well you can do this and this and get away with it and cut your hand off and get no no no. If you take that mark, you're done. You're done. Okay, You're, it's over for you. Okay, it's over for you. And verse nine here in Revelation 14, and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, uh, you're worshiping the beast if you take that mark. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Don't believe these guys. Well, you can do one or the, no. You take the mark at all. You're worshiping the beast. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture in the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. Okay? In the presence of the lamb. Tormented. With fire and brimstone. In the presence of the Lamb. Our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father. Um, you know. Uh, Bullingerites. Like uh, Shepherd's Chapel. Those devils. And uh, that Mario guy. Um, whatever his name was. Um, vigilant. Whatever his name was. Um, they taught. They teach. Soul annihilationism. That your soul gets destroyed. So your suffering won't be eternal. Really. Uh. Be, shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Some uh, colon right there. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever 
and ever. Your soul will not be annihilated. Soul annihilationism is heresy. Let, go ahead and eat and drink for tomorrow. You'll still die, right? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll eventually, my soul will just be burned up so I can endure all that affliction that I'll be going through. No, 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 no. No. It's eternal. Eternal torment in hell. Be careful of what you're listening to, dear friend. Okay? And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. See that whosoever? Well, Christians can know whosoever. Whosoever. <laughs> if any man, whosoever. What does that mean? A Christian during the time of Jacob's trouble, you take the mark, even you will be damned to hell. Eternal security is not in the time of Jacob's trouble, except for the 144,000 sealed Jews. Do you understand? Okay? You're a Christian in that time period? These wicked devil, easy believism heretics just believe? The scriptures say that whosoever... That means you, Christian, that gets left behind, who takes that mark. Verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. It's faith and works. You can't take that mark of the beast or you will go to hell. It doesn't matter who you are. You take the mark of the beast and you're going to hell. Faith and works. The law will be back. Faith and works. You can't take the mark of the beast. Patience of the saints. That God will be coming back. That he will be coming at his second coming. You have to endure to the end. The faith that you're having that the Lord will be coming back soon. during uh, At the end of time, uh, time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, So it's faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble, dear friend. Not the gospel, not how it is today, okay? Not the uh, uh, once saved, always saved. Not by grace through faith. No, no, no. That ends when we get redeemed. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. I don't care how tough you think you are, tough guy. You can't make, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. No matter how embedded you are with the Vatican, you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it. Those are the conditions of the time of Jacob's trouble. Totally different from today. Yes. Yes. You want to be right with God during the time of Jacob's trouble? You got to keep the commandments and have faith on Jesus Christ that he's going to come back. Yes. And you can't take that mark, which the Jesuits have been preparing everyone for, for the time of Jacob's trouble when the mark of the beast is implemented. And I believe, like I said, that will be midway through. Okay, Those are the conditions of the time of Jacob's trouble. The dispensation following the dispensation that we are in today. Okay. How does the time of Jacob's trouble end? Let's go first to Amos chapter 9. One of the greatest uh, minor prophets that you can go to that talks about this. Amos chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 10. Amos chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 10. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door that the posts may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away. And he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Yes, this is the time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be a brutal time. Where the apple of his eye is going to be persecuted beyond levels that you can't even imagine. Though they dig into hell... 
then shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. God's judgment, God's wrath is going to be poured on this earth for seven years during the time of Jacob's trouble. You're not going to get away from it. The only way you can get away from it is getting saved today that you may be caught up with the church of the living God, the body of Christ. That's the only way you're going to escape it. Okay? And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command a serpent and he shall bite them. Okay? And though they go into captivity before their enemies, thence will I command the sword, and it shall slay them. And I will set mine eyes upon them for evil and not for good. Talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord God of hosts is he that toucheth the land, and it shall melt. And all that dwell therein shall mourn, and it shall rise up holy like a flood, and shall be drowned as by the flood of Egypt. It is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven and hath founded his troop in the earth. He that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Are ye not, are ye not, as, are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me? O children, children of Ethi, uh, eh, O children of Israel, Ethiopians, Hamites. Okay? Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Kaphtor, and the Syrians from Kir? Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. The sinful kingdom, that kingdom of that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve. Ye shall not, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Those who fall in line with that man of sin, the son of perdition, and be yoked up with uh, his Roman Catholic kingdom. Okay? That's what he's talking about. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, very quick, just two verse, verses. Revelation chapter 13, verses 9 and 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Verse 10 again in Amos chapter 9. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Now, the fulfillment, the restoration, the second coming. Verses 11 on to verse 15 in Amos chapter 9. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as, build it as in the days of old. What does that mean? When Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to be ruling as king from Jerusalem on the throne in Jerusalem as the son of David king. Okay, son of David, ref reference onto his kingship, king of the Jews, okay? that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt. Mm. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit, them, and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. That means during the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be farming. 
planting vineyard, vineyards and gardens. Okay? None of this here in America with the GMO nonsense, none of this fake synthetic cancerous toxic food. No. It's going to be farming. Oh, like you, like you said, brother, you're, you're finally going to have your own farm during the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them. Seth, the Lord God. This is talking about the restoration of Israel. When our Lord Jesus Christ come back and rule and reign from Jerusalem for a thousand years, the kingdom of heaven. Okay, this is the end of the time of Jacob's trouble when he comes back and establishes the kingdom of heaven. Okay, all right. And now let's go to Zephaniah. Zephaniah, which is right before Haggai. Zephaniah, chapter 10, on to verse 20. Okay, Zephaniah, chapter 10. Uh, excuse me, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 20. Okay, we saw the conditions of the time of Jacob's trouble, faith and works, those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Okay, and if you take the mark of the beast, it doesn't matter who you are, whosoever takes the mark of the beast, you're going to hell, no ifs, ands, or busts. You may be a devout King James Bible-believing Christian. Yeah, but you take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell, no matter what. Okay? matter what. Zephaniah chapter 3 verses 10 on to verse 20. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. This is talking about the kingdom of heaven. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed of all for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, the, the sinners of my people, okay? The sifting, okay? And thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The poor and afflicted people during the time of Jacob's trouble, when they realize that 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 that's who they that that's who those guys were all oh, wow. Everybody, come on, let's flee, okay? The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments, he hath cast out thine enemy. The king of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. The Lord is in the midst of thee. When our Lord Jesus Christ is physically on earth, ruling and reigning in Jerusalem as king of the Jews for a thousand years, the kingdom of heaven. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He's going to be among, Jesus is going to be on the earth. Okay? He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people, among all the people of the earth, when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. What ends this uh, dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble? Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 on to verse 21. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, 
And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Remember we looked in Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2? That rider on the white horse had a crown and a bow with no arrows. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. That's that man of sin, the son of perdition. This is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the capital W Word of God. Okay? And the armies, see, capital W Word of God. Seven times that appears. Every time you see a capital W Word of God in the scriptures, it's always a reference unto Jesus Christ. Remember that. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's us who get caught up with them. Yes. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Remember how we looked at that in Revelation chapter 12? Remember? You remember? Okay. Rod of iron, our Lord Jesus Christ, ruling as king. With a rod of iron. Okay? Hmm. <clears throat> and he treadeth the winepress and the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. So when our Lord come back, there going to be a slaughter, man. Yeah, there going to be slaughter when our Lord comes back with us. We're going to, yeah, there's going to be a slaughter. Oh, there's going to be a slaughter. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 on to verse 31. Matthew chapter 24, verses 39, 29 on to verse 31. Immediately after the tribulation, after the tribulation of those days, the tribulation after the, the great tribulation, it's not there. After the tribulation of those days, okay? It does not say the great tribulation. Thank you very much. Okay, it does not. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall the shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay? Every eye is going to see him. When we get redeemed, like well, where... Um, uh, they said uh, when the Lord, uh, when that thing, what the thing, where um, the Father spake and everyone thought it was thundered, but some heard a voice. Okay, when we get caught up, people are going to hear a thunder, but we, the Church of the Living God, are going to hear our names like, come up hither. Okay, not everyone's going to see or hear that. Okay, but we who are of the Church of the Living God, but at our Lord's second coming, everybody. Gonna, ain't going to be no doubt about it. Okay? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And we talk about that in the video, um, the two raptures, okay? 
watch that video. That will be in the description box, okay? So what ends the time of Jacob's trouble? The second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, the fifth dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble. How is someone made right uh, with God during that time period? Number one, it's the time period for the Jews. So, someone is made right in that time period by faith and works, okay? Those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. And if you take the mark of the beast, that's the only time in scripture where if someone does something, you're guaranteed ipso facto, no hope, go to hell, no question, you, you whatever, you're done. That's the only time in scripture that happens. That's how serious taking the mark of the beast is. Okay, because I believe and it does something, it affects your brain that makes you permanently the enemy of God. Okay, that's what I believe. But that's the only time that that's in scripture like that, where absolutely ipso facto, you make, you take that mark of the beast, you're going to, you're going to hell. No matter if you're a good Bible, King James Bible believing Christian or not, you're going to hell if you take the mark of the beast. Okay. And the end of that dispensation is the second coming. Now, what is the sixth dispensation? Revelation chapter 20. Now, some people make the argument, well, 666, the number of the man, 666. So the sixth dispensation is, is, is the time of Jacob's trouble. I disagree. I disagree. Because, yes, Six is the number of man, is it not? And on that, very quickly, um, Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, is going to be on the earth, ruling and reigning as king in Jerusalem. Is he not? Yes. Uh, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5, on to verse 6. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Hmm. The man, Christ Jesus. Yes, six is the number of man. And the man, Christ Jesus, is going to be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 6. The kingdom of heaven. The thousand year reign of our... Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 and verse 6. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. Okay? And I saw thrones, and they, sat, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beasts, the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. A thousand year reign, the kingdom of heaven. Satan will be bound for a thousand years. This is when the Sermon on the Mount, the doctrine that is taught in the Sermon on the Mount, will be applicable during the kingdom of heaven. But before we get to that, go to Psalm, the book of Psalms, Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Good question. 
The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. He's going to be ruling with a rod of iron, remember? Yet, yet have I set my king, the son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ, upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Okay? Be wise now, therefore, wisdom equated on the fear of the Lord. O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, oh, and you will, and rejoice with trembling because he's going to be on earth. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all, all, are all they that put their trust in him. Hmm. Trust in him. Yeah, as their king. Mm -hmm. Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 14. Any of you who are conversant with Scripture, you were, you were like, oh, Brad, you, you're, you have to go. Yes, yes, you have to go to Zechariah. Yes. Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14. Beginning at verse 7 unto the close of the chapter. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord. Not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at the evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. During the kingdom of heaven, he's, he's king, reigning as king for a thousand years with us. Okay? In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. And the land shall be turned as a plain from Jeba to Rimon, south of Jerusalem, and shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place at the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananiel unto the king's winepress. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Mm -hmm. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Remember how Peter talks about uh, a fervent heat and great burning and stuff? Remember? Okay. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and on his hand shall and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. Yeah, the wealth of all the Vatican. <laughs> yeah. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. And of course, I believe the horse, mule, camel, ass, uh, and all the beasts that shall be in these tents, those are reference on, references onto types of people. Okay? Yeah, uh, that could be very literal, absolutely. But uh, stubborn horse... Stubborn mule <laughs> and uh, or of the camel and of the ass. Okay, verse 16. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold of every one on the hand of his neighbor, and on his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. 
And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against, against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. So during the kingdom of heaven, keeping the feast of tabernacles, going up to worship the king, mm -hmm. all those nations that survived going to be going up and worshiping the king at the Feast of Tabernacles? What does that tell you? Hmm? And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. No, no rain. Again, more proof positive that during the time of, during the kingdom of heaven, excuse me, that it's going to be farming. And if you don't get rain, there ain't going to be no crops. And you ain't got no crops. You ain't got no food, see. Okay? And also this is very telling that during the kingdom of heaven, there are still going to be on earth people who will not want to have anything to do with Jesus. Really, huh? But Satan is my, like a brother said to me yesterday, a dear brother made it. It's like, you know, even when Satan is bound, Man still is sinful and needs the Lord for everything. Isn't that something? Even with Satan bound for a thousand years, man is still going to, men are, there are still men out there who are not going to worship the Lord and are going to be punished by having no rain, no food. Isn't that interesting? And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Remember, he's going to be ruling with a rod of iron. Okay? And there is, is the Feast of Tabernacles again. What does that tell you? Okay? This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Three times Feast of Tabernacles comes up. Okay? The Jewish feasts, which were there to give homage unto the Lord, they are going to be implemented during the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because the Lord is there. We're going to be worshiping the king. Okay? They're going to be held, those feasts are going to be held in honor to the king who is present at Jerusalem. Okay? Comprende? In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. In Jerusalem and Judah, okay? And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seethe therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Mm. And see, like I told you, during the kingdom of heaven, that is when, that is when the Sermon on the Mount will be the doctrine. That will be the doctrine of the kingdom of heaven, okay? When our Lord is on the earth, the Sermon on the Mount, that is the constitution, as it is said, for the kingdom of heaven. That, during the kingdom of heaven, is when doctrinally the Sermon on the Mount will be in effect during the kingdom of heaven. And when you read the Sermon on the Mount, as many of you Catholic people have, and a lot of you is like, this is doctrine for us today. No, it is not. No, it is not. Because notice that in the Sermon on the Mount, Faith is mentioned only once in the form of a rebuke, O ye of little faith. And also in, Ma in the Sermon on the Mount, for example, Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. Okay? For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. What does that mean? During the kingdom of heaven, it's works. Very similar to the Garden of Eden. Okay? Um, very quickly, 
Uh, now I will answer you, dear brother, dear, dear brother. Okay? What is faith? What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11. What is faith? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Not seen. Today we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? Our faith is in what our Lord has done. It is finished. Okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble. Their faith in that the Lord will be coming back. Okay? That he will come. All right? But faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. As we said yesterday, during the Garden of Eden, the dispensation, um, faith, no, brother. No, brother. Faith was not necessary in any way. Why? Because they could see God. Well, didn't they have to have faith in what he said? Uh, they had to obey what he said. Okay? Faith, they didn't need faith. Why? Because they, 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 they saw God in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve, they saw God during the kingdom of heaven. We already looked. Nations are going to go worship the Lord at the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feasts of the Lord are going to be implemented to worship the Lord who's going to be physically at Jerusalem on the throne. What does that mean? Um, you know these people, these whack jobs like those uh, uh, prophetic devils? You blaspheme the Holy Ghost! Then shut up! No. You can only blaspheme the Holy Ghost when Jesus Christ is present on the earth. The, the video will be in the description box where we talk about that, okay? Um, during the kingdom of heaven, you can blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Why? Because Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. Okay? Listen to me. During the kingdom of heaven, Jesus Christ is going to be on the earth. Okay? He ain't going anywhere, actually. And we're going to talk about that. Okay? But um, once he comes, he's here. He's here. He's here to stay. Okay? But faith is not going to be necessary in the kingdom of heaven. Why? Why? Because, do we, did, you, did you read with me in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11? And uh, dear brother, this, um, this tone is not directed at you, dear brother. Uh, it's not directed at you because remember, these easy believism devils... Faith alone in every dispensation, and you need faith during the kingdom of heaven? That's a lie. Hebrews chapter 11. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. During the kingdom of heaven, you, you, you're, you're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to see him. You're going to be able, wherever you are in the crowd, in the kingdom of heaven, you will be able to look physically and see Jesus Christ sitting on the throne. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Faith will not be needed during the kingdom of heaven just like it was in the Garden of Eden. Why? Because you're going to be able to see God. Jesus Christ. God our Father on the throne. Faith is not needed. You don't need faith when you're going to be able to see Jesus Christ. Hello? And uh, dear, dear, dear brother, I'm that, that's not for you. Okay, I, that's not for you. That's for those devils who say it's faith alone in every dispensation. It's faith alone from Genesis to Revelation. No, it's not. No, it's not. You don't need faith during the kingdom of heaven because you're going to see him. And as we have already looked in Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 15, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. What does that mean? Your forgiveness is dependent on what you do. 
works. Okay. And over here, uh, where is that in Matthew chapter five, uh, where he says when, uh, where is that? Um, uh, yeah, Matthew chapter five, uh, verses 21 under verse 26. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, the Bibles take that out without a cause. Okay? The Bibles call Jesus a sinner because he got angry. Okay? The Bibles take out without a cause. That's why you need the scriptures, boy. Okay? But, but I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Racha, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be danger of hell fire. See, this is for the kingdom of heaven where you being forgiven is dependent solely upon what you do. Uh, that's called works, dear friend. That's called works. Today, you know, you, you can blaspheme the Lord. You can cuss. You can say, well, you, you're going to give an account for it. Don't, don't misunderstand that. But you can do that. And if you're of the church of the living God, sealed unto the day of redemption, that you're going to heaven. Okay? But... During the kingdom of heaven, you shoot off at the mouth and you don't forgive people, you know. Um, you're not going to be forgiven. That's, that's hello. Come on. <laughs> you, you wicked devils, come on. You have, come on. That's works. There's no faith involved in the kingdom of heaven. There isn't. Be because you can see Jesus. You're going to see God. In the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You're going to see him. Okay? Verse 23. Therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar. And there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother. And then come and offer thy gift on the altar. And who are they offering it to? The king who is going to be sitting on the throne. Who you're going to be able to look at. Okay? Agree with, agree with thine adversary quickly. Whilst thou art in the way with him. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. And the judge deliver thee to the officer. And thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee. Thou shalt by no means come out thence. Till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. R rule you with a rod of iron. See. The kingdom of heaven. Is when. The Sermon on the Mount doctrinally will take effect. Because the Sermon on the Mount, that, that's why the Catholics love it. It's all works. There's no, faith is, faith is mentioned one time on the, in the Sermon on the Mount. And it's in, O ye of little faith. It's in the form of a rebuke. The kingdom of heaven is all works. All works. If you don't forgive people, Lord, you're not going to be forgiven. That's a work. Okay? Uh, somebody had, you got a problem with someone, someone got a problem with you, uh, you're going to the altar. Before you go and offer your gifts onto the altar, onto the Lord who is sitting at the throne, it's like, oh, oh, wait, oh, sorry, Lord. I got, got to go take, a, you know? Those are works. It's works. If people don't go and worship the Lord at the Feast of, Feast of Tabernacles, he's going to drown them out. He's going to starve them. Okay? And there will be plagues with no rain because it's going to be farming. Okay? Yeah, brother, again, you're going to get your farm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But see, the kingdom of heaven is all works. How is someone made right during the kingdom of heaven? Works. Works. If you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. You got to go and uh, offer things unto the Lord at the Feast of Tabernacles and also at the other scriptural feasts. Why? To give on an homage unto the Lord who is on earth physically as king sitting on the throne. Okay? The kingdom of heaven is all works. How is someone made right in that dispensation? 
How is someone made right in the kingdom of heaven? Works. Now, here's the thing. There will still be sin during the kingdom of heaven. We've, we've already looked at the evidence of such. There will people be people who will not go up and worship the Lord, will reject the Lord, and the Lord's like, fine, you're not going to get rain. I'm going to starve you out. Okay, uh, You can sin during the kingdom of heaven. Yes, you can. There will still be... See, even though... and Like I said, my dear brother who brought this up yesterday, uh, even with Satan bound for a thousand years, man, man, still sinful. There's still sin in man. There's still sin in man. Mm -hmm. During the kingdom of heaven. Now we who have regenerated bodies, of course, we're, we're, that's different. But those who survive the time of Jacob's trouble and go into the kingdom of heaven when the Lord come back, okay, there's still going to be sin on the earth. See, you and I, Church of the Living God, we get redeemed, caught up. We're going to be likened onto angels, okay? We're not going to have sin, okay? We're not going to have sin. But during the kingdom of heaven, sin is still going to be on the earth. Sin is still going to be there, okay? Sin has yet to be eradicated during the kingdom of heaven. There will be peace during that time, yes. But sin will still be there. Sin will still be there during the kingdom of heaven. You read the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? Lord, Lord, have we not? I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye who and uh, the thing about where he says, rock or sand foundation. Okay? The Sermon on the Mount is the doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. And there's still going to be sin during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? There's, there is. Not amongst us who get redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. No, because we're going to be likened unto angels. Okay? But during the kingdom of heaven, man on earth, there's still going to be sin. Even with Satan bound for a thousand years. And that's something. What changes in that? What changes in that? Go back to Revelation chapter 20. Okay? Go back to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 under verse 15. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan, the father of lies, shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now remember those nations that we read about in Zechariah that's kind of snuffed their nose at the Lord, we ain't doing that, and the Lord's like, fine, I'm going to starve you out. Those people who will not have the Lord to rule over them, Satan, after he is let loose, uh, after his thousand years in the bottomless pit, those people that rejected the Lord, see, there's still going to be sin. There's still going to be evil. Okay. The kingdom of heaven actually doesn't really end. But see, Satan. Satan needs to be officially ipso facto dealt with. Sin needs the final death knell for everything. Okay? So, verse 9. And... The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Millions of people. Billions, probably. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, city of the great king. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The huge army that Satan is going to muster of those that were indignant who would not come up to worship at the Feast of Tabernacles because remember, during the kingdom of heaven, there's going to be peace, yes, but there's still going to be evil. There's still going to be sin. Not within the actual kingdom of heaven, but there's still going to be sin and evil in the world. Okay? 
Verse 10. And the devil that deceived them, the devil, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Hmm. The beast and the false prophet. Hmm. Satan, the beast, and the false prophet. So the devil, beast, and the false prophet. There's your trinity. There's your trinity. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet. There's your trinity. And where is the trinity? Being tormented day and night forever and ever. So I think of that satanic trinity. Take offense and a gate. Now, Satan is finally defeated. Satan is finally done, and all those who he deceived, okay? Then, and I saw a great white throne where a majority of you people, unfortunately, are going to be standing before. See, we who are saved, the church of the living God, when we get redeemed, we're going to be standing before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to be with the Lord no matter what. Our rewards is what's going to be determined. Uh, here at the great white throne. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. Like I said, I'll put the, the link for the three books in the description box. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. What does that mean? That's the end of sin. That's the end of sin. So, during the kingdom of heaven, the sixth dispensation, where the man in Christ Jesus is going to be ruling on the throne at Jerusalem, how is one made right? During the kingdom of heaven. Works. No faith. Again, why? Because you can see him. Do you have to have faith in what he says? No, not necessarily. You have to obey what he says. Or you're going to pay a heavy price. Okay? Or he won't forgive you. But you don't need faith because you're going to be able to see him. Okay? Today we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? We have faith in the scriptures. Yes, we do. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. During the kingdom of heaven, you, you go see God. Faith is not there. Just like it was in the Garden of Eden. They saw God. They didn't need faith. And hence, after Satan is let loose, all those nations that remained during the kingdom of heaven that were Wicked, evil, and whatnot? Revelation 20, verses 7 under verse 15, is the end of sin. Yes, dear brethren, people, sin, evil, and wickedness finally will come to an end. There will be a thousand years of peace. Yes, there will. But evil and sin and wickedness will still be in the world. Okay? It is not until... Satan and death and hell are cast into the lake of fire? It is not till, until then that it is totally done away with. So, sixth dispensation, which is the kingdom of heaven, I believe and teach. One is made right with God by works only. No faith, because you're going to be able to see him. Okay? And if someone disputes that with you, Mark them as a heretic. 
Hey, all you easy believers and devils, you're heretics, you're liars, you're wicked devils. You don't need faith when you can see the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So, but Brad, you said there were seven, you teach seven dispensations. Yes. What is the seventh and final dispensation? Revelation chapter 21. And I saw uh, verses 1 on to verse 9. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Why? Because all sin and evil has gone away. Okay? For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And there was no more sea. Hold your place here. Go to Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 6. What, what are you doing, Brad? Isaiah chapter 65. Verses 17 on to, hold on one second. All right, sorry about that. Uh, Isaiah chapter 66, verses 17 on to verse 20. 65, Brad. <laughs> verses 17 on to verse 25. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 on to verse 25. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which i create for behold i create jerusalem a rejoicing and her people of joy and i will rejoice in jerusalem and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her nor the voice of crying New heaven and a new earth. New heavens and a new earth. Excuse me. Okay. There shall be no more hence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not fulfilled his that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being an hundred years old shall be accursed. Yeah, kicked out of it. Because it will be done away with. It's done away with in Revelation chapter 20. Hold on, hold on. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are, are the days of my people. And mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Again, farming, cultivating things like that. None of this technology tripe, okay? They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they were yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and thus shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. Go back to Revelation chapter 21, picking up at verse 2. And I saw, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. See, once our Lord comes back, it's not like he goes back up again or anything like that. No. Once he comes back, he's back. Okay? But bringing in the new heaven and the new earth. Okay? After Satan and sin and death, death and hell, are gone. No more sin. No more death. And God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Because the wages of sin is what? The wages of sin is death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any pain. For the former things... 
And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. It is done. No more sin. I am, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. That's what Alpha and Omega means. I will give unto him that a thirst of the, of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Yes. See, the lake of fire, that doesn't end. See, it's not soul annihilationism, okay? Okay? That's where evil, sin, death, wickedness is going to be in the lake of fire. The new heavens and the new earth, new Jerusalem, no sin. It's going to be the lake of fire. No more sin ever again. No more hell. No more pain. No more death. No more sorrow. Yes, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable, abominable and murderers and whoremongers mongers and sorcerers and idolaters. Gotta watch your idolatry there, buddy boy. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Only just we just read there's no more death. And there came one unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And then it goes into talking about the the um the temple and whatnot. And let's pick this up. We're skipping a little uh in Revelation twenty one, verses twenty two. On to verse 27. Okay. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Just one person. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither work, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Why? Because those are going to be put in, uh, in the lake of fire. Okay? No more sin, no more death. Okay? Revelation chapter 21, uh, 22, verses 1 on to verse 6. And he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding of the throne of God, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it. On either side of the river was the tree was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of nations. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. Throne of God and of the Lamb. One throne, one God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay. Shall serve him. Singular. One throne. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And they shall see his face. Okay? And his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Uh, look at verse 3. And there shall be no more curse. Hold your place here. Go to Genesis 
chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. What is this curse? Well, let's talk about that curse real quick. Genesis chapter 3. Verses 14 on to verse 24. Here's the curse. Then, you know, Satan, that serpent, we already looked at that, okay? Came and yea, hath God said, uh, Adam and Eve, they ate the fruit, they, they, were, they sinned, they only knew good, now they know evil, and then, you know, God's going to kick them out, but that's, you know that by now, we covered this in the previous video. Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 on to verse 24. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And we are dust, by the way. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel, prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh. Okay? Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. <laughs> yeah. Remember, sisters, Man is to be the head of the wife. Man is above the woman. The woman was was made for man, not man for the woman. You got a problem with that? You take that up with the Lord, not with me. Okay? <laughs> but, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, get to this, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So we were made of dust, and Satan was cursed to um, eat dust all the days of his life, and we are dust. So the ground was cursed here in Genesis chapter 3 because of Adam and Eve. So the curse is the cursed earth. And because the earth is cursed, guess what? Man is cursed. Okay? Man is, was cursed because the earth was cursed. Because we came from the earth. Okay? So when he says there will be no more curse, do you get it? No more curse. Meaning... Meaning, after the great white throne of judgment, no one's going to be, there's no way to be made right with God anymore after that. Because those who are going to be right with God are, made, are already right. And those who are without are without. So how does one get made right um, with the new, uh, in the new heavens and the new earth? You don't. Because it's already done. See, that's when eternity begins with the new heavens and the new earth. How is one made right with God in, that fi in the final dispensation? You're not. Okay, because if you miss it, during, uh, um, the kingdom of heaven, if you miss it, okay, when Satan gets loosed and uh, you miss it, you, that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay? After the great white throne, there is no more getting right with God. Okay? After the great white throne of judgment, there's no more getting right with God. Okay? Why? Because Revelation 21, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Okay? It is done. Okay? And back in Genesis chapter 3. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. 
And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. No more curse. No more sin. Okay? By the time the new heavens and the new earth, I call this the dispensation of the new heavens, of the new heaven and the new earth. Okay? The seventh and final dispensation. How is one made right with God? In the uh, kingdom of heaven, it was all works. But after the judgment of the great white throne and Satan and death and hell and everything is cast into the lake of fire, there's no more sin. Hence, no one's going to be made right with God anymore because there will be no need to because everything has been cast into the lake of fire that was abominable and maketh a lie. Do you see? Hence, the final dispensation, you're already right with God. There's no more need for it because death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You see? Okay. Now, let's, let's finish this up. Revelation chapter 22. Verses 7 unto the close of the scriptures. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the saints of, this prof of the prophecy of this book. Now, our Lord Jesus telling, talking to John, it's like warning him about like, hey, future events to, and stuff like that. But verses 1 under verse 6 tell the ultimate, uh, the ultimate end of all things. No more sin forever with our Lord Jesus Christ. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which shewed me these things. Now this angel, which John fell and worshipped at, look what he does. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. I believe that this angel that John saw was one of us, okay? Likened on to the angels after the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? Given our new body. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. See, this is instruction to be given unto people who will read the prophecy of this book. While well, verses 1 under verse 6 talk about the fulfillment of the new heaven and the new earth. Okay? These are like the closing remarks, if you will. Okay? And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. To give every man according to his work shall be. According as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. That's what Alpha and Omega means again. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs. And sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root, and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is athirst, Come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, 
If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, and the Bibles, the book of Revelation is the most messed with book of all. Okay? So, and if any man shall take a word from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. See, from verses 7 on to verse 21 are closing arguments, closing remarks. Where verses 1 on to verse 6, no more, no more sin, no more sun, no more moon, but just in the beginning God. Sin, death, and hell will eventually be destroyed and be defeated and cast into the lake of fire. So the final dispensation, there's no need to be made right with God because if you uh, get cast into the lake of uh, fire, that's it. But see, in the final dispensation, the dispensation I call the new heaven and the new earth, there's no sin, there's no death. The wages of sin is death. There's none of that. No more sin. No more pain. It'll be gone. And hence, because of that, if you've already, if you're in there, you're already in. There's no more um, adding to it. I mean, people will be born and stuff like that. I reckon, of course, but yeah, once you've once you've been condemned, damned to the lake of fire, that's it. And that death and hell are in the lake of fire, all sin, gone away. No more sin. So the final dispensation. Okay? The sixth dispensation, the kingdom of heaven, is works. The fifth dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble, is faith and works. Can't take the mark of the beast. And the final dispensation, the dispensation of the new heaven and the new earth, no more sin. Hence, no one needs to be made right with God anymore because... Uh, death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. So, that, dear friend, dear brother, dear sister, that is the end of this video and about the dispensations. Like I said, you can disagree with me with all these stuff. That's fine. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> I really don't. This is what I believe and teach. And... Here I stand on the scriptures. Hopefully these videos will help some of you. I know that there are a couple of you who really were like, Brad, I wish you would uh, do a video on dispensation. So like, well, that, that, that's not up to me. Then the Lord had me to do these videos about these wicked prophetic devils. And then the Lord's like, okay, Brad, now you now is the time to do a thing. I'm just like, okay. So that's going to be it for this video. That's going to be it for this video. And uh, thank you, dear brethren. My wife went out and had her test today. Um, I, uh, so now we're just waiting for the whatever this test was. And then the 7th, my wife goes in for another procedure. Some of you know what it is, but I'm not going to mention it. And then the 11th, there's something. And now there's a, the 12th. <laughs> The 12th now, she's got something to do with her eyes or something like that. And then, of course, the 20th is the big one, the hip replacement, replacement surgery. So, thank you, all of you, Church of the Living God, our brothers, our sisters. Thank you so much for all of you who help us. Thank you for all of you who pray for us. Uh, we love you. We pray for all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We pray for so many of you. Please keep us in your prayers. This is going to be quite a month. And like I told you, I've, I've told you, um, after the 20th, my wife's surgery, um, you're not going to see too many videos from me for a while. My wife is going to be in a wheelchair. Okay? I'm going to have to help my wife onto the toilet and help her off of it. Okay? 
probably even going to have to bathe my wife and stuff like that. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Her arms will be, but her hip, she, she, she I'm going to have to, she's going to be scooted around in a wheelchair. Okay. So that is going to take up a lot of my time. There may, there, there may, I mean, it's up to the Lord, but if after the 20th year, it'd be like a week or two weeks and you don't see any videos, um, that, that is why. Okay? It's not like I'm sitting on my lees doing nothing or not going out or doing anything for the Lord. No, it's just that as a husband, I have to take care of my own flesh, my wife. And she, you know, our, our best friend, our beloved brother, Brother Alexander Hartley, Lord willing, will be coming to see us during that week of the 11th onto the 19th. And uh, interesting Good Friday, Passover, and Astarte are coming up on that weekend. Hmm. Be interesting to see what happens. But uh, that's when uh, I hope our, our best friend is going to come and that's going to be glorious because we're going to need all the fellowship we can get too because this um, we've got some trying times coming, brethren, here for us. But we know that the Lord will get us through it. And with your prayers, you will help with us with your prayers. So please pray for us. And uh, that's going to be it. I'm going to upload this. It's now 2.23. Began this a little after what? 11.30 something. So hope this helps. Thank you, brethren. We love you. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. See you later.